been funded by the AHRC under the Collaborative Doctoral Award scheme and um, the funding was to look at uh, a model of theatre that might enable profoundly disabled audience members to access theatre, specifically an emotional narrative within the theatre form, which is something that very few theatre companies, if any, have looked at in the past, and certainly there is no academic support for that work. White Peacock was part of a long development process that the AHRC funding enabled. Because we were able to marry practice with theory, we spent a considerable amount of time in research and development working alongside a very strong cross-arts practitioner team and made a theatre piece that looked at how to engage with emotional narrative whilst at the same time preventing these young people from feeling that what they were witnessing was true and real. was a baby. <laughs> a young audience with profound disabilities coming into this space would be invited to take part freely and ethically in what the show was offering them. So uh, it's a love story basically about a young man who is spending the last night of his long summer holidays in his garden. He encounters a young woman who mistakes the garden for a wild wood and it's about their unfolding relationship. So this is a touring piece and we bring our own micro theatre and create a theatrical environment in the spaces that we're going to. When you go in, you will notice that it's, it's a very stark, sterile environment and that's quite deliberate to minimise the amount of stimuli for the students and young people that come in. So when the uh, young people first come in and they're introduced to the space, it is pointed out to them that they're free to leave at any time. These openings are never closed. They can always see a way out and there's two to do that. So we have a maximum of, of six young people, each with a one-to-one -one companion. Um, it's a very different, very intimate experience. This trunk opens out and fills the whole space and the young people can go under it and, and look at the lights changing. Our um, lighting designers design things to happen with the lights so that there's a very visual uh, stimulus through that. They can feel it, they can feel the wind, the breeze as it's flapping. So aside from the production, which is clearly a very large legacy as of out, coming out of this research, I created something called Jasmine's Guidelines. Jasmine's Guidelines provides a set of foundational principles and guidelines for theatre makers wanting to make theatre for this very disenfranchised audience group, invisible in many cases. And I felt that the weight of academic research behind it was a way of giving some gravitas to a practitioner voice. Oh. important for the Playhouse to engage with people with learning disabilities. It's something that we've been doing more and more in recent years and we have very close partnerships with a number of schools uh, in the city. Uh, we've been expanding the audience's experience of this sort of work but also we've been making work with people with all sorts of different abilities for many years now. And this is the most thought through, th refined example of this. I think for the future, it will have an impact far beyond the one that it will have with the people who are involved in it today because of the plans we're putting in place for the future. Audience reception is, is completely at the heart of this research. So for our actors, for example, they would expect to spend much more time watching the audience than the audience watching the performers. So obviously, in a piece for non-disabled audiences, the audiences know that they're meant to be watching the action. With 
With these audiences, there is no such cult cultural construct in place. And when they first come and see the piece, it is often the first time they've encountered theatre. In a mainstream piece, when lights go down and something is about to happen, we have a certain set of cultural understandings that sit alongside that. With this audience, it's simply going dark slowly. I genuinely feel that profoundly disabled young people do not have theatre provided for them that gives access to the form of theatre that non-disabled people can choose to see. To my knowledge, there are no theatre companies who look at engagement in an emotional narrative. Another really important part was being the AHRC in this because we couldn't have done it without them. They've been an essential part of the funding of the research for the project and the delivery of the project and it's a perfect sort of relationship for us. Yeah.